This is a revision video for the GCSE physics topic of weight, which comes up in the forces unit within paper 2 of AQA GCSE physics or combined science. In this video we're going to describe what is meant by a resultant force, look at how to calculate a resultant force from two parallel forces, look at how we can calculate a resultant force from two non-parallel forces by drawing parallelograms, and resolve one diagonal force into its horizontal and vertical components. Weight is a tricky concept, but not because it's mathematically hard or even because there's anything all that challenging about the science. The difficulty mainly comes from our vocabulary, the words that we use. This is one of those really annoying concepts where everyday people say the word weight and they mean one thing, but physicists mean something different. And since this is GCSE physics, you should know what physicists mean. The words mass and weight are often, incorrectly, used interchangeably. When most people say weight, what they really mean is mass. Mass tells us how much matter or how many atoms an object is made from, how much stuff is in there. This square is made from 56 atoms. Mass is measured in kilograms and the shorthand for that is kg. When you're doing any calculation that involves mass in physics, the mass needs to be in kilograms. So if it was in grams or milligrams, you'd need to convert it first or else your final answer would not be correct. Mass isn't affected by forces. Your mass doesn't change because somebody pushes you or because you're experiencing air resistance. And it also doesn't depend on where you are. Here's a dinosaur. Let's say he has a mass of 3000 kilograms because he's made up of 3000 kilograms of atoms. That's his mass on the earth. But if I take him to the moon, he's still made of 3000 kilograms of atoms and he still has a mass of 3000 kilograms. That's going to be important when we start talking about weight, because weight does change based on where you are. When any object with mass enters a gravitational field, it experiences a force called weight, which pulls it towards the object generating that gravitational field. As you know, all forces are measured in newtons, which is shown with a capital N. Now, you might think of gravity as something that only planets or other really big objects like the moon have, but actually, any object with mass has gravity. You have gravity, but the strength of that gravity, or gravitational field as we often call it, is determined by the mass of an object. So because Earth is so much bigger than you are, about 10 to the 24 times bigger than you are, its gravity is also 10 to the 24 times stronger than yours. And so you don't really notice that you have gravity. Things aren't being pulled towards you at any measurable rate because they're being pulled towards the Earth so much more strongly. Now, this is important because the stronger gravity is, the larger the weight of an object will be. So what that means is that your mass on Earth, where the gravity is about six times stronger than the Moon, will have a weight that is about six times larger than if you were on the Moon. And that's important because forces cause changes in motion. You've probably seen videos of astronauts jumping on the moon. Because the gravitational field of the moon is comparatively weaker, their weight, that force that they experience, is smaller. And so that means that they can jump higher and further. Interestingly, the further you are away from the centre of the Earth, the weaker that gravitational field is. And so what that means is that if you were to climb to the top of a really tall mountain, your weight at the top of that mountain would be ever so slightly smaller than your weight if you were just stood at sea level. Because the gravitational field pulling you closer to the centre of the Earth would be weaker, and so your weight is smaller. If you are stood at sea level, then the strength of that gravitational field is 9.8 newtons per kilogram. So for every one kilogram of your body mass, you're experiencing a pull, a force, of 9.8 newtons. But of course, you don't need to be stood on the ground in order to feel that force, because weight is a non-contact force. So even if you jump out of a plane, gravity is still acting on you. You don't need to be touching the thing that's causing the force in order for it to act. Throughout GCSE physics, we need to be able to identify whether quantities are scalars or vectors. Scalar quantities don't have a direction, they only have a magnitude or a size. So mass is an example of a scalar quantity. Vector quantities still have a magnitude, but they also have a direction. Your weight is a force 
pulling you down towards the earth. So it does have a direction and therefore weight is a vector quantity. Weight can be measured using a piece of equipment called a calibrated spring balance or a Newton meter. This contains a spring which stretches as a larger force is applied. So you would hang something off the end of the hook here and the heavier it is, the more that spring will stretch. This causes a marker to move, my little red line here, and that allows us to read off what the size of the force is. An object with a bigger mass also has a bigger weight, so it would trigger a bigger reading on the Newton meter. In fact, we can go slightly further than just saying the bigger the mass, the bigger the weight. We can actually describe these two quantities as being directly proportional. So that means that if I double the mass, I double the weight. If I triple the mass, I triple the weight. And I can identify this from a graph because it has a constant gradient or constant steepness and also because it passes through the origin, that zero, zero point. Now for some maths. We can calculate the weight of an object based on the mass of that object and the gravitational field strength of the planet or satellite that it stood on. Weight is measured in newtons, shown with a capital N, because it's a force and all forces are measured in newtons. Mass is measured in kilograms, so if you're given a mass in grams, you'll need to convert it before you complete the calculation. And gravitational field strength is in newtons per kilogram. My first step in doing any physics calculation is to use the units, the letters written after the numbers, to work out which quantity that number represents. So the 70 in question one has kg written after it, kilograms, and I know that kilograms are the units for mass. So I'm going to put that 70 where I've written mass in my equation. Then the 1.6 says newtons per kilogram after it, and I know that those are the units for gravitational field strength. So 1.6 goes where it says GFS. Now I can see that weight is 70 multiplied by 1.6. And if I do that calculation, I find out that my answer is 112. We're talking about weight, which is a force, so the units are Newtons. The next four questions are all the same type. So pause the video and see if you can follow my example to come up with the answers. So in question two, we do 15 kilograms multiplied by 10.4 to get an answer of 156 newtons. Then for question three, we get an answer of 3,330 newtons. For question four, I needed to spot that my guinea pig had its mass given in grams, not kilograms. There are a thousand grams in a kilogram. So I'm expecting the mass of my guinea pig to be slightly less than one kilogram. The way that I get there is by dividing by a thousand. 800 divided by a thousand is 0.8 kilograms. And that means that my guinea pig has a weight of 19.92 newtons. Similarly, my cockroach has a mass of 0.03 kilograms and therefore a weight of 0.345 newtons. As with all your GCSE physics equations, you do need to be able to rearrange them. So if we make this slightly more manageable. Now, what if I want to calculate the mass of an object when I know its weight and I know the gravitational field strength of the planet that it's on? I need to rearrange my equation, which means moving it round so that I have mass on its own on one side of the equation. Right now, mass is multiplied by gravitational field strength. In order to get rid of something from one side of the equation, Whatever that is currently doing, we need to do the inverse operation. So if it was added on, then we would subtract it. Here it's multiplied, and the inverse operation of multiplying is to divide. So I'm going to divide my right-hand side of the equation by gravitational field strength. Whatever I do to the right-hand side of the equation, I also have to do to the left. So I also divide weight by gravitational field strength. And so I get a rearranged equation that looks a bit like this. That horizontal line means divide. So this now says that weight divided by gravitational field strength equals mass. Now that's fine and correct, but the convention tends to be that we put whatever the subject is on the left hand side. So I want my equation to say mass equals. And I can do that really easily. I'm just allowed to flip the two sides of the equation over. 
Now that I have my rearranged equation, I'm ready to start calculating. So in these questions, I have a weight of a thousand newtons and I'm given the gravitational field strength of the planet or the satellite and I need to work out what the mass of the object will be. So now I know that mass is weight divided by gravitational field strength. So for question one, the weight is a thousand newtons, which is given to me in the question. And here we've been quite nice and said a weight of a thousand newtons. But if they didn't tell you that that number was the weight, you could work it out based on the units. So I'm going to do a thousand newtons divided by my gravitational field strength of 1.6 newtons per kilogram. And that gives me a mass of 625 kilograms. Pause the video and do the other four questions yourself. Hopefully that wasn't too tricky and you've managed to work out that the remaining four masses are 96.15 kilograms, 270.27, 40.16 and 86.96 kilograms. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you found this a useful introduction to mass, weight and gravity. If you did find it useful then please like the video and don't forget to press subscribe below.